Moving on to step two. Hopefully you caught the video of step one, prepping your engine, little lubrication, checking all the nuts and bolts to make sure you don't have any problems in the future of this install. It's just a safe route to take. All right, and this step is when you actually start working on the bicycle itself. I start with installing the rear drive sprocket for the engine and the drive chain. Now, every bike is different. This is a coaster brake bike. Every bike style is different. So this is just a general explanation of what we got going on and how the rag joint hooks up to the wheel and whatnot. But anyway, a coaster brake is when you pedal the bicycle forward, as you can see, and you want to stop, you pedal backwards, and that applies the brake in the hub. Now, if you have a freewheel bike, you should be able to pedal your pedals backwards, and it doesn't stop the bike, because usually there's a set of caliper brakes mounted up here that grip to your wheel, like a 10-speed or mountain bike, and that's what stops you. So that's the difference between coaster brake and freewheel bicycle, for those who didn't know. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to take the brake arm loose, this bolt and nut, slide our clip out of the way, take this axle nut loose, slide around to the other side, and take that axle nut loose, slide our wheel forward and that should set our wheel free so we can install the drive sprocket assembly. Now that we have our rear wheel removed, I have this one lightly chucked up in the vise there just for video purposes. That way you can get a good view of the work needing to be done. Now in your kit will come what they refer to as a rag joint. This one is all assembled. You'll have to dig through your bag of nuts and bolts to find all of your bolts, nuts and washers, your two rubbers, your three metal plates. Some kits come with a two metal plate. This one happens to have three. No big deal, no big difference. And your drive sprocket will be in there also. Now to install this, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on how that is installed. You will have to cut one of your rubbers. This one's already been done for the sake of time. That way you can get it into and on your hub. All right. Those are our parts. Now in order to get that on, we will have to remove this nut, place it on the table, remove the brake arm nut, which yes, I had already pre-loosened. slide our brake arm off. Now we'll be able to install our sprocket. For a little FYI, why I'm on the subject, you must reinstall the brake arm. I have had people come by the shop in the past years with no brake arm. You must have that or your back wheel brake will not operate. And you will crash, perhaps get into an accident because you can't stop your bike. So it is very important to reinstall your brake arm on your coaster brake bike. I'm not going to get into it all right now, but that is a very important 
piece for your brakes to work correctly. As you will notice, your rear drive gear or sprocket has a bevel. And when I mean that, I mean it has a little lip that countersinks toward the rear, or you can turn it around and have it countersink toward the front. What I mean is, if you need the clearance after you've reassembled it in your bicycle frame and it's close to the frame or the chain is close to the tire, you will need to remove and possibly flip it to give you more clearance where you need. Unfortunately, you do not know if you need the clearance or not until you've already assembled it on the bicycle wheel and back in the bicycle frame. There's no way to know that. All bikes are different. Like I said, this video is a general idea of how to assemble this. There's so many different bikes out there. I can't say what bike and what model and what make, what way to face your sprocket. And you'll also notice on a coaster brake bike, that the bearing cap, which is that black cover right there in the center, does not fit through the center hole. I do not recommend removing your bearing cap and running without it, which is what I have seen people do in the past, because as you can see, the lubrication is in there. And if you remove this cover, then it has no protection from road grime and the weather. So my personal suggestion, what we do when all of our pre-assembled bikes is have this taken to the machine shop, which we do it in-house ourselves, but being you're a do-it-yourselfer, you're gonna have to run it to a machine shop, get them to bore out the center, so your dust cap fits through there because you don't want to remove that it shortens the lifespan of the wheel bearings and the life of the wheel okay assuming you were lucky enough to have a machine shop where you live that would turn out the center or bore out the center to fit the dust cap give you a little extra clearance as you can see now you can leave your dust cap on and your bearing is protected. Now, if you are unfortunate enough to not have a machine shop, if you go to our Facebook page, Ecotrans Gas Powered Bikes, or our website, EcotransGasPoweredBikes.com, send us an email from either place, Ship us your sprocket and we will turn it out for you and return it right back to you. The cost is $20. You can send a money order in with your sprocket and take care of the shipping and handling. And we will bore it out and send it right back to you. And then your sprocket will fit just like you see that sprocket fit. All right. Having mentioned that. We have all of our nuts and bolts and our rag joint apart. So now it's time to assemble our sprocket on the rear wheel. All right, first, the first rubber shim that we had cut, you will stretch around and drops in there. Now we're good for our backside. Then we will take our sprocket, one of our mounting bolts, and put our shim on the back side of our sprocket. Now we will line up a hole.
And that is how that part works. On the back side, we will take one of our plates, place it over the bolt, install our nut. We'll install our lock washer first, or a flat washer. Our lock washer. And our nut. It's a little tricky, but you'll get it. And we will repeat this process all the way around, all the while trying to Keep our sprocket lined up and clear of the spokes. Poke that one through. Poke that one through. Repeat the process. Flat washer. Lock washer. the nut. Now you'll repeat this process all the way around until you have all your nuts and bolts and all the holes to firmly attach your sprocket to the wheel. Then you will go around each nut and bolt. Try to tighten them up evenly to keep your sprocket straight and true. We don't want it doing any wobbling if we could possibly help it. That could give you chain problems in the future. All right, well that is how the stock rag joint mounts your sprocket to your rear wheel. Now your second option on how to mount your rear drive sprocket is the aluminum hub. Comes in two parts. Squeezes on the hub assembly. Easier to install the bolts. Gives you a lot truer turning sprocket, which means straight and not doing the egg shaped wobble or the left to right wobble, which could give you chain problems in the future. And I'll show you how this one mounts up. All right, first we'll take our bottom half, find where it comfortably goes through the spokes and hold that there. And we'll take the top half of our sprocket. Rotate it a little bit to get everything in there. As you can see, the two half moons make a hole. Put our fastening bolts in the holes. Take our hex head, get them started. They should start finger tight. If you're having any problems, you might have a little crooked, so look into that and start over. It is aluminum, not real hard to strip. If you put a, a wrench on it and start cranking and you got problems, you don't want that, they should start easily and go all the way down snug with your fingers.
What I personally like about these is they turn straight, perfect, from the start. And then you will slide your sprocket and bolt through. Place your nut on there. And repeat the process. It doesn't use all nine holes. So don't be alarmed. Oops, that is just fine. They're designed that way. I have ran both setups on my bikes in the past. Both are adequate. But I do have to admit that I favor this one a little more being this easy to work on. And keeps my chain problems down to a minimal. And as you can see, it clears the bearing cap. So I keep my bearing cap on there. I'll install my other three bolts, tighten everything up. And it also gives you a little left to right adjustment, just in case you do have to scoot it from the frame or scoot it from your bike wheel a little bit. You can loosen the two bolts that mount it to the hub, tap it a little bit to the left or to the right, retighten it down and makes your life a little easier. Now every bicycle that we sell that is pre-assembled comes with one of these aluminum hubs. Because like I said, they are just a much better piece to run. But that doesn't mean you can't use the stock rag joint. They adequately work also. They're just a little more work to get to Straight and true is all. So that decision's up to you. Just thought I would show you both ideas. And you can make your decision on which one you want to use. Regardless of which mounting option you decided to go with, the stock rag joint that comes with your kit, or the upgraded aluminum hub mount, you should be finished with stage two. And it should be ready for a chain here in the near future. All right, well that's the end of stage two. Our wheel is tightened back to the bike frame. Our brake arm is reattached as you can see down there. Like I said before, that is drastically important. That is what helps your coaster brakes stop when you pedal backwards. All of our nuts and bolts are tight on our hub mount. Regardless if it's an aluminum hub mount or your rag joint hub mount, make sure your nuts and bolts are firmly tightened. Now you're ready for the next step. 